I'm Marianne Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law here at Think Tech Hawaii, uh, where we, we discuss uh, cutting edge legal topics. And today we are very, very lucky to have Christine Kubat on the show. She's the editor in chief of a new magazine called The New Leaf, which is going to cover marijuana in Shall all we? its forms. We want, why would you? Oh, yeah. I probably should have had a copy of the show <laughs> at that point. <laughs> well, it's a new leaf. And when, you, when are you planning on publishing, Christine? Oh, within the next few weeks. We're doing everything we can to get out before September. Terrific. Right. Terrific. Because I think the state needs it. I think the time is right. I think it did. So tell me, well, tell me how you got involved, how, where you got the idea, what the magazine is going to be like. Tell me everything. Oh, everything. Okay. So um, the idea came to me. I was at a forum, and there were a number of guests there, Senator Russell Ruderman, uh, Dr. Berg, who's very much involved in certifying patients on Hawaii Island, a lot of people. And everybody was talking about cannabis and what's happening. Right. And my head just started to swim. I was like, a drift in a sea of information and thinking who is going to get all this together and consolidate it somebody really needs to do that and then I went oh I guess that should be me so I just uh, started talking to people about it and first it was going to be a newsletter something very simple right. just for the big island right. Um, and then, no, that wasn't enough. Next thing, you know, we needed to go statewide. And <clears throat> just yesterday, I was having a conversation with people in Oregon. And my business partner, he's actually an Alaska na uh, resident. And Raphael Chaikin. Yes. Let's, let's give him his due, Mr. Yes. Chaikin. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so now what we're hearing is this really needs to be done for the whole West Coast, which then makes it easy for you to imagine it should be done for the nation. Right. And um, who knows where we're going to stop right now for myself. I'm just focused on Hawaii. Well, you know, I, when I was at the, uh, there was a National Cannabis Summit in Oakland uh, last month, I guess it was, or the month before, mm -hmm. and there are, there are some sophisticated magazines, you know, now dedicated solely to marijuana, and they look great. I mean, they're glossy, they're like, like fashion magazines, are, they're, they're, they're really terrific. And, you know, it's a burgeoning market. I mean, it's, it's huge, it's huge. So you may very well find yourself... Uh, coastal or in national or who knows you know well I'm glad to hear that because um, I was kind of feeling like you know the burden was on us so I'm glad to hear that there's other publications out there there is I wish I I, I think I just got rid of them because I had kept them around for a while because I was so enamored with them and uh, but let me I can get you some information about what I saw what they gave out at that show that was a terrific conference I mean everybody from all over the country came and um, you know Obviously, I focused on the legal uh, ramifications and tax ramifications of medical marijuana dispensaries. So it was really, uh, you know, fascinating. So what, to, to what kinds of topics you, are you going to focus on? I mean, are you going to focus on the dispensaries, or are you going to do recreational in anticipation of recreational? Or okay, so we're the big tent, and we're bringing everyone together: medical marijuana. Um, dispensaries, patients, advocates, regulators. We also want the Department of Health to be in there because they have um, certain messages that they're committed to, right. like anti-smoking. And I think a lot of times when people smoke marijuana, that smoke a lot, I think some of those people are in denial about the health um, um, impacts, the negative impacts. I think that's right. Like a lot of people focus on it as a medicine and the positive things, but I think there's some denial going on there. I think that needs to be part of the conversation. We're very much um, interested in promoting responsible use. Right. But at the same time, we're going to get into the whole hemp industry mm -hmm. uh, because that's an important part of it, and there's a lot of people organizing around that. You know, some of them even actually involved with the dispensaries, too. Right. Also looking at growing hemp. So there just needs to be a lot of conversation. People need to have really good information. There's already um, a lot of rumor being generated. There's battle lines being drawn. And we just want everybody to get in there talk to each other, share the information that they have, and then we have to start sorting it out because 
the whole way we got to prohibition to begin with was a lot of very bad information right. and a lot of misinformation and, right. and propaganda. And we've got to sort that stuff out, but we can't just go in there saying, oh, it's all nonsense. You know, there's nothing to worry about. No, you know? that's, I think that there's very, uh, people have very valid concerns. I myself have a valid, I th what I think is a valid concern with respect to gummy candies. I think that they're really dangerous, actually, and probably shouldn't be on the market. And I think in Colorado, they just ban them. I mean, there are definitely aspects of, of uh, legalized marijuana that you want to monitor. So people don't either hurt themselves by driving under the influence or smoking, as you said, the smoking hazards, or hurt others like young children or, you know, so it's a, it's a big step, in it, but it's a lot of responsibility, I think, mm -hmm. to, to legalize. And I, I've had a lot of conversations um, with people saying similar things to what you're saying, and you'll they'll laugh and they'll ridicule, oh, there's no evidence that driving um, under the influence of marijuana is dangerous. So, okay, let's, you know, get to that, Let, but at least let's have that conversation. Right. Let's not, like, just dismiss each other. Um, right. I, I, I was talking with a woman the other day about the issue of kids, you know, getting a hold of edibles, and she just went off, and she was saying, you know, that's not my problem, that's yes. the parents, and blah, 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 and, and just really asserting her right as a medical marijuana patient, or probably also a recreational user, to sort of trump this concern about kids. But I don't see that happening in Hawaii. People are very... Uh, much focused on Ohana, yes. there's the Aloha spirit. I think we can go into this really caring about kids and um, not just saying, well, it's not my problem if they get it, and finding ways to, you know, end prohibition in a way that just serves everybody. Yes. And so that's the magazine we're hoping to just be front and center in that. So, well, I think Virginia Pressler, who is, as you know, is the head of the health department, I think she's got a really good handle on that and about how edibles, gummy bears, lollipops, cake, candy, that kind of thing, might impact children. And she had, she's got a pretty strict mandate that she doesn't want, she doesn't want uh, it, these things abused. So I, I really appreciate her point of view. I think she's got a, a very uh, reasonable point of view, because I think it is the states. You know, we regulate cigarettes, we regulate alcohol. I mean, I think it's something that needs to be regulated. I'm, but maybe it's because I'm a lawyer and I think everything <laughs> needs to be regulated. Yeah, well, it's a transition. So how is that going to happen? You know, we're in a situation right now where there's this strict prohibition on the use of marijuana. And we see people flouting the law, you know, all the time. I mean, there's not really any place in this island where you wouldn't find people using it recreationally or growing right. it, you know, despite what the law says. And so how do we get from that place where there are laws um, that no one's paying attention to and getting regulations that we're all going to respect and feel good about? Right. Right? That's living with the right. law or right. whatever. You know, There's, or <laughs> well, there were certain legislators that I, I was happy to see in your publication, at least the, pub, the version that I saw, Della Obelotti and Willis Sparrow, and they're great sources of um, reasonable uh, governmental figures that that are that are reasonable on on this issue, and, and don't and aren't aren't trying to politicize it or you know scare people or you know I think that they've done a lot to to just normalize the use of medical marijuana and to make it to make it you know the the implementation very sane but do you what do you think about recreational do you, do you think there's a timeline for recreational I think we're headed in that direction and um, you know because it's already being used that way and so to me the really tricky part of the conversation that we need to start having relates to how we're going to um, set up dispensaries and create a dispensed regulated market and still um, take care or address the needs of people who want to grow their own. Right. So in our magazine, The New Leaf, we're never going to use the terminology black market. We're going to always refer to that as the homegrown market because we feel that the laws uh, to begin with, the prohibition laws, um, were not constitutional, were not fair. Um, if you look back at the whole history of that, you know, 
and you read some of the testimony that came up before these congressional committees, I mean, it was this whole thing like you can't let people have marijuana because if white women smoke it, they're going to have sex with black men. Right, right, you right. Know? I and applaud it's that decision. Crazy. Not to use the term black. I, I heartily yeah. applaud that decision. And so since that time, even after the uh, Supreme Court ruled the Marijuana Tax Act unconstitutional, which was basically how they kept people from growing it, and then Richard Nixon rolled in, and they created all of these uh, under this Controlled Substances Act, right. um, really strict prohibitions, and that's how cannabis got to be uh, Schedule One to begin with. Right. It was really a direct, in my view, just because I remember, it was a really direct reaction to the 60s and the prevalence of use in the 60s. I mean, look, we both know marijuana has nothing in common with the other uh, Schedule One substances. Right. You know, they, these are really serious, powerful drugs, and... Uh, but it's just, it was a social concern, you know. It, they, it was based on a social bias of a, of a, a certain constituency, so I, I agree. Yeah, I feel like, you know, people that were running the country at the time, which was basically older Caucasian males, uh -huh. felt so threatened by this kind of, like, women, you know, feminism coming right. on and, you know, black power coming jazz, on. Jazz, right, and, and this and crazy like, jazz age drug. Boom, you know, we're going to shut it down by uh, making their substance of choice illegal. So the people who've just been defying that all along and asserting their right to grow it and smoke it and use it, we're not going to continue to stigmatize them by calling what they have done the black market. That's, that's terrific. I yeah. think that's terrific. Um, because I, uh, in my view, uh, marijuana right to civil rights and people ought to be able to um, be, they're entitled to their civil rights and make their own choices as, as adults. So I, I, I absolutely think that it's a great idea that people who've been working so hard for so long are not stigmatized and uh, well, I told you, I worked, now everybody will know. I worked for High Times Magazine when I was a kid, and I was an editor there. And, you know, but they, this is 20 years ago, and, you know, they were adamant marijuana for food, f fuel, and fiber. I mean, they really, it, it's got a, a lot of uses. Um, the founding fathers grew hemp, right? So, you know. Yeah, you um, could pay your taxes with hemp, and I think there were even certain places where you had to grow a certain amount, you know, as your patriotic duty, if not as your legal duty. So now we're going to let go of that. But here in the state of Hawaii, you have this, um, this sort of contingent coming on that's promoting the uh, medical marijuana industry. And okay, so we're going to award these dispensaries. And it's a pretty lucrative thing, actually, for Department of Health. Like, oh, yes. You know, the amount of money that they make off of the fees. The applications. And then the processing, you know. And people are getting kind of greedy, and they're like, oh, wow. And so the idea is that they're going to channel all of this use into the dispensed market. Right. And that, to me, right now, like when we're out there on the landscape starting to interview people, talk to people, like, what are your concerns? That's what we're hearing. The biggest concern and the biggest source of friction is going to be between this emerging dispensed market and the homegrown market. That's fascinating. Yeah. But what, I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll talk a little more about that because, uh, yeah, once the once big money and government get involved, all kinds of things happen, right? Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Life in the Law, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. <laughs> Marijuana. 
Hi, you're watching Life in the Law, um, and I've been discussing marijuana with, with Kristen Kubat and uh, her new magazine, or she's the editor-in-chief of this magazine, Raphael Chaikin is the publisher, called The New Leaf, dedicated to uh, state, it's going to be a statewide magazine dedicated to all facets of marijuana use. Cannabis. Cannabis, yes. Right, we'll is, use that term because yes, it's kind of is a it bigger a, umbrella. And, and you know what, actually, why is it a big, big umbrella? Because like, I think the audience would want to know. So there's a lot of different strains um, of the, sati the cannabis sativa, well, okay, so then of the cannabis plant, there's a lot of different strains. Mm -hmm. And some of them are cultivated for their psychotropic properties, uh -huh. which would be the THC. Um, and then other plants are cultivated for other properties. So you might have lower THC, but you'd be um, looking to cultivate something that had, you know, more seeds that were oilier or more fiber that was stronger or something like that. Right. So when you get into the cultivars or to the um, strains that ha are valued for their fiber and seed qualities, then you're talking about hemp. Okay. But when you're talking about a plant that you're looking for the um, THC or the other cannabinoids, um, those kind of, um, yeah, they're very complex chemicals. They but, are. You know, that I know. And, uh, when you're cultivating for those properties, then you're talking more about marijuana or medical right. marijuana. Okay. Good, good to know. We mm -hmm. want to use the uh, appropriate terms. We want uh, every, you're right, we want a big tent. We want every... All, the, all voices to be heard, not just the medical establishment or the governmental establishment voices, but voices, people who've been fighting for this freedom for a really long time, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I said, I, I knew many of them in New York, and uh, they, they went against the tide for the longest time. I mean, people, normal was N-O-R-M-L, which National Organization of Marijuana, what's the L for, R-L. Anyway, they fought this fight for a long, uh, very long time. So, you know, so are you going to have, um, we, it, when, in high times there were humorous, uh, there was some humorous humor, satire, or is it, is it going to be, all informational or like more like a business magazine or yeah I think more of an industry journal because mm -hmm. I feel like that's what's needed and again you know we want to attract Department of Health um, the various de police departments um, marijuana anonymous you know we right. want those kind of people those kind of agencies organizations to feel comfortable sharing their message too because again i just really feel like that needs to be part of the conversation the only way it's going to work is if we can get to responsible use and we don't do that by just you know brushing that all off and no. um and i don't even think that the medical you know, when you go out there and you start to meet the people who have actually been awarded the dispensary licenses, you're going to find that a lot of them are very serious health professionals. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I represented a group. They didn't get a license, but I represented a group, and they were all medical professionals. They were healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and they, I mean, that's how I got. I've realized how, how serious and how, many, how much cannabis could do for, you know, various uh, illnesses, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and so I think it's important for us to kind of keep that, um, that more professional tone, you know, for our journal. If other people want to do other things, you know, go for it, but we, yeah, that's not what we're about. People need good information. They're really hungry. So far, every time we go out with the magazine, you know, we've got like uh, some articles together, kind of got a mock up or whatever. People respond so well. I mean, at Office Depot the other day, we were printing some copies, and the girls that printed them up for us were back there reading it. Right. right. The, <laughs> uh, I, when I saw I saw a little uh, uh, little article on Pacific Business News, I was immediately intrigued. I immediately called you because <laughs> it's a, it's such a pervasive. It's becoming such a pervasive part of our culture, you know. And you do want it, you know you're going to be like U.S. News and World Report for cannabis, you know. Good. I mean that's yeah. what you're going to be, you know. And people, you're going to be the go-to. To publication. Good. Yeah, that's our, our aim. And um, so, for instance, when you look at different things like the dispensaries are not allowed to advertise. Right. But at the same time, they have an obligation to uh, inform the public 
about medical marijuana and um, their products. So how do they do that? You know, we're there to help. Department of Health, they're completely overwhelmed. You know, when you contact them I and you try to get right. some information, yeah. they're just bombarded. And I'm really kind of wondering how they're going to be able to handle everything that's being put on their plate in addition to everything that they already have to do. Yeah, I think Because I think that's, that's right. where our environmental protection, you know, right. regulatory process is also embedded. Right. So, you know, we're there to serve them as well. And then we've got people that have got products, you know, people are starting to get excited. Um, then on the, can of, on the hemp side of it, you know, um, how is this whole process going to go? Like, so for instance, I was at a gathering the other day, Scott Enright, who's the chair of Department of Agriculture, was there. And I'm like, Scott, you know, what's going to happen? Are you guys going to uh, start to give out licenses for hemp? And he basically told me, you know, by the end of this month, we're going to see an RFP out. Looks like they're going to select one, they're going to give one award, and they're going to charge that um, awardee with cultivating seeds so when it's time for the hemp industry to take off, at least we have our own seeds. Well, that's great because that was a big, as you know, big issue. Where are you going to get the plants? That was a huge issue this time. Nobody seemed to think about it. Nobody seemed to think about the question of what constituted a plant. I mean, there were all these little details, right. but we're learning. I mean, I think the learning curve is steep, and so we're learning. That would be great to, uh, to have someone cultivating seeds. That would be yeah, uh, for, brilliant. Yeah, but that will be for, like, the hemp purposes, right? right? So, you know... We're learning, but we're also making it up as we go along. Mm -hmm. And then what is the stuff that we use to make it up? Most of that stuff has to be information. Right. Most of that. And, and then in addition to that information, there needs to be conversations. And so we need to be talking, okay, how's this? Now you have these people that are going to be very interested in cultivating hemp. If they're out there and they're cultivating hemp um, in the field, there's a potential for the pollen that is generated from their plants to cross-pollinate, you know, homegrown medical varieties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How are we going to resolve that issue? Right, right. right? We don't want to deny ourselves the ability to grow the hemp because um, here's something really beautiful that I'm understanding now. There's all these people out there advocating for medical marijuana as medicine for themselves. Right. You know, this is going to heal me, and the list of ailments is long, yes. you know, stress, PTSD, whatever. Right. But this Insomnia. Yeah. Yeah. same plant has the ability to heal the planet. Really? Mm hmm It has these amazing phytoremediation properties where if you plant hemp in soil that's been contaminated with chemicals, and there's a lot of soil contamination in Hawaii from the um, sugarcane uh -huh. industry, um, it will remove those chemicals um, a great deal of them from the soil and render them harmless. Wow, that's, I, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Wow. So now there's going to be these people jumping up and saying, well, you can't grow that hemp next to my, you know, marijuana plant because I need it for medicine. Well, what about the earth? Right. You know, the planet needs right. the medicine too. Right. So we have to talk about all this. We have to have really good information and... Again, that's so, why so we're doing So who would it. you say, okay, so obviously the health department has been a leader with respect to the medical marijuana dispensaries because all the, all the people who wanted a license had to apply. So who are some of the, uh, you know, notable voices in the field and what are they saying? I mean, uh, like, uh, is there a representative of the homegrown market or several representatives of the homegrown market or... Um, representatives, you know, like I know, like I said, Della Obelotti and Willis Barrow, I've worked with them. We'd like to get a Cannabis Bar Association uh, section together, you know. Oh, yeah. So, you, you know, just, you know, so so who who have you been working with? Like what, who, have there been, uh, you know, big names in the cannabis industry that we should know about? Or? I don't know if I totally understand the question, but um, I... You know, as far as an advocate for the homegrown market or the um, activism end of it and then pushing for decriminalization and recreational mm -hmm. use, um, I've known Roger Christie forever. Okay. Like at one point, Roger Christie and Aaron Anderson and another man named Dwight Kondo and I started the very first like hemp revival company in the United States. Really? We were the Hawaiian Hemp Company. And there was this big old bag of hemp seeds that used to sit under my desk. And I still remember Aaron Anderson out there. He got to play um, Santa Claus 
in the parade, the Christmas parade in Pahoa, and he was throwing hemp seeds. Oh, that's right. And just like people went off, they got ballistic about that. So I, I have a long relationship with those folks, and um, you know, Roger, I. I'm definitely going to be getting his opinion on different things. There's a woman, Andrea Tischler, who's been really involved on Hawaii Island. Um, then there's the, the formal organizations. Um, so there's going to be um, a task force that's right. going to come together right. as a result of HB 2707. And we cover this uh, in the first edition of the magazine. And there are going to be some people, like from the Drug Policy Forum, will be represented there. Um, they don't really have anybody from the homegrown market sitting at that table. So I think we will take on the responsibility of, of interviewing are people. They, and are they concerned with repercussion? Is that why they, they're not at the table? Are they concerned because the, it's the homegrown market and it's outside the legal system? Or so do you think they haven't been it, asked? The, I, they haven't been asked as far as I can see. They still consider it the black market. Um, there's a lot of people who like this idea of dispensaries because you know it's a way to shut down the black market. There's right. a lot of people who are looking at this as a way to just channel all the demand into the dispensaries and not let people grow their own plants. Well, I think that would be unfortunate. I think it'd be limiting uh, something that's sort of a cultural, societal linchpin almost. I mean, people really can, you know, get around, you know, uh, together around this issue. Mm -hmm. And I don't think to uh, not, uh, you know, to negate a whole uh, significant portion. Uh, yeah. No, that's not, that's not good. And there's a business risk in it, too. You know, that's most of the approach that we will take is um, if we inflate the potential and we go off and we say, you know, this is what's going to happen, um, all of these people who are growing it themselves are all going to start going to the dispensaries, the market's this big, people start making investments, it doesn't quite work out, then those business interests are going to be right up there in the legislature oh, pushing for absolutely. laws that take absolutely. it that way. So, you know, we're just telling everybody, calm down. Right. Let's just see how does it go with eight dispensaries. Right. Maybe that's enough. Right. Because... There's other things that are going to happen at the, at the federal level. And if all of a sudden marijuana becomes decriminalized and everybody can grow their own, and these people have all rolled into Hawaii and made these big, huge investments that aren't going to pan out, that would be a disaster. That would be. It would be. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to thank you so much for yeah. coming. Look for the magazine, The New Leaf. Yep. It's going to be, I, I know you told me it's coming out in well, August 15th, did you say? Or oh, no, August 15th, we're past that okay. oh. we, um, We're <laughs> trying think? to get it out the last week in August. It might be the first week in September, but it's soon. Look Very for it. Very soon. Look for it yeah. and, and read it because this is something that affects our communities. We all are involved. We all want, want good information, and I think you're just the right person to bring it to us. Thanks. Yeah, Thank we're going to do our on. best. Okay. Thanks for having okay, us. Okay, bye. Bye.